strain and young modulus. I welcome all of you to our um, Zoom meeting. Uh, this is what we are going to be discussing. At the end of this lesson, ladies and gentlemen, we should be able to do the calculation of the stress uh, and strain, do calculations on shear stress, do uh, state the Hooke's law and, de and, and define Young's modulus of elasticity. We should also be able to draw a, a stress and strain graph that is only but limited to elastic limit. That is limited to elastic limit. All right. All right, uh, guys, let's go on. Um, <clears throat> what is direct stress? What is direct stress? Because we've got, our topic is about stress, strain, and Young's modulus. What is direct stress? Guys, when a force is applied directly on an elastic object, now you must understand that any object is 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 regarded in, as an elastic object. Any object can be solid object, but it's an elastic because whenever you apply a force on an on an object, that results to expanding or constructing. That is an elastic object. So when a force is applied on an object, it would result in an object a uh, expanding or contracting. Okay. So. The resistance against this direct force is called direct stress. So when a force is applied on an, on an object, it results to an object doing what? Expanding or contracting. You can see on the picture here, here is our, our force. Originally, it was the whole thing, but the force was applied, which means this object has, has constructed up to this length. So, this is the force that caused a, the constriction. But if this force were to move up, so it will it, it will con it will cause ex a expansion. So it will be longer. We are still going to look at that. So a force that causes an object to expand is called a tensile force. While a force that causes an object to contract, not contract, to contract, is called a compressive force so we are, we we are still looking at a direct stress so a direct stress is 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 a, is a force that is applied it, it is when a a force is applied on an object directly at a particular area looking at these two diagrams they show us that when a force is applied on an object uh, as you can see the direction it is pulling away this is a tensile stress it causes this thing to elongate or become longer. It causes it to become longer. So initially, this was our area, our length. So after this was the in, a, increase, then it increased to this length, to the final length, because the force, as you can see, the tensile, so it, it stretches it. Compressive stress results into a lesser, a, 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 length because the forces are going inwards so they make this thing to be shorter this is the change in length x is the change in length so this is what, what we mean about direct stress so direct stress is a force that is applied directly and results into and results in the reduction of the size or the extension of the size depending on the nature of the stress tensile uh, increases the length direct stress when it is compressive, it reduces the size of the of the of the bar. All right. Moving forward, guys. This is what we need to know about direct stress. Direct stress can also be further defined as a force per unit area. So it is force over area. It is force over area. So here's the formula for direct stress. Direct stress is equal to force over area, where this sign here is the, is, is the sign for the direct stress in Pascal's. Then F 
is the applied force in newtons and then area uh, a is for area in meter squared now area can can either be a rectangular a rectangular is your area will be length times breadth if it is square obviously both sides are equal so it becomes a area is equal to l squared also if it's a, if it's circular if it's circular um solid circle will be area is equal to pi r squared i like using this one area is equal to pi r squared i'm sure we we all know it from maths also area is pi d squared over four this is also applicable area is equal to pi d squared over four now we have this one this one is a hollow circle um i don't think that you 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 have it much on your notes there you should you, you should definitely add this one whereby when a given a has got has got is 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 hollow like that so in other words a it is not solid it is hollow so what do we, what do we get there what do we get there? We get the fact that a is going to have um, two areas, two diameters, the external diameter and an internal diameter. Right. That is what we are going to have on this. <laughs> okay so we are saying if 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 the given cycle is hollow if a given a, a, a cycle is hollow guys then you are going to have pi over four into d squared plus d squared this one should be a minus here minus d squared okay but we are going to Work it with it later, but here it's supposed to be minus d squared. Uh, and then patience, let's not write on the screen. Please erase. Okay, then guys, now let's let's have an example of what. Thank you. Let's have an example of what a uh, we, we 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 are going to be working on. Right now, let's say. A force is applied as shown in the diagram below. Calculate the tensile stress in each part. So this one would be tensile stress. Why is it tensile stress, guys? Because it is the arrow is moving away, meaning that it is stretching this to be tensile. But if the arrow was, excuse me, was pushing inside, it would have been a compressive stress. It would have been a compressive stress. So how do we calculate the, the force? I mean, how do you calculate the central stress in each part? We've got two parts. We've got two parts. So this part will be part number one. If you if you want to call it this one, part number one. And then the second one will be part number number two. Let me put back my highlighter. So there's part number one there. Then this one will be part number two. So for us to get the stress in each part, you know that the formula for stress is force of a, a force of a area. So we already know the force is 30. So if the force is 30 kilonewton, now all we need to know now is what is the area for part number one? What is the area for part number two? An area from the previous equations, we know that area is equal to pi r squared or pi d squared, depending on which one you, you prefer to use. I prefer to use the first one. So area one is equal to pi r squared. So the radius on area number one is going to be 10 because we divide the diameter by two. That's why you've got 0, 0,01. Then this is the value of our area one. I'm going to send you these uh, notes, guys. I'm going to send you these uh, notes so that no one uh, takes too much time trying to copy things. I'm going to send you this. All you need to know, just learn and appreciate the concept. If you have questions you ask, uh, the notes I'm going to send you. Okay, can I still continue? Yes. yes sir. Thank you. All right, so area number one is calculated. So we have to find area number two. This area number two, 
the diameter is 10, so the radius is five. So I, 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 I use pi r squared in my, in my equation. So here will be your, your area number two. So once we have area two, ladies and gentlemen, um, it's fine. Once you have area two, now we can calculate the what? Now we can calculate the, the yes. stress on, a, or on, 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 on one. The stress on one is force over area one. Remember the force on both uh, parts is going to be equal. So it's 30. So it's 30,000, 30 kilonewton divided by area number one, which is already given, uh, we've calculated, then we get 95.481. I'm going to send you this, don't worry about them, but let's just understand the concept. Write your notes somewhere where you, you might need you might need to. And please ask wherever you don't understand. Stress number two, remember? Okay. Yes? Do you always have to convert from, meet, from millimeters to meters? Uh, yes, because, because from here, look at what I said here. I said area must be in what? Okay, meters. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right, <clears throat> then area two, uh, we've calculated area two, force is there, we just substitute, we get a 381. What is important here, guys, to note is this, is that between these two tensile stresses, be it compressive or tensile, but we can see that uh, the maximum stress is on the smaller part. Is it clear, guys? Yes. yes. Yeah, check that. Sure, sure, sure. The maximum stress is on the smaller part. We, we, we know that because, uh, and why is that important? Um, so why is that important? If we go to our textbooks, uh, I, I, I believe that we have got our textbooks. If we go to our, our, our textbook, I'm going to give you a page right now. Uh, it is page uh, number 159. Let's go to page 159. Go to page 159. There's number five there. All right, are we there, guys? Yes, sir. Page 159. Yes. Number five. Yes. The question says, a bar is a steel bar is, is actually low, is really loaded by a tensile load, meaning it's a force that is pull, pulling it, uh, causing maximum stress of 160 in the bar. The maximum stress that is caused in the bar is 160. Young's modulus is given as 250. Calculate the tensile load F. Now guys, in that question, you are given the maximum stress, which is 160. Now that maximum stress is going to be acting on, on, on which diameter there? The smaller diameter. On the smaller, smaller diameter. diameter. Yes, because we, yes, on 30. So in order in, in order for you to find the tensile stress, if you if you if you use that maximum stress of 160, then you have to use that diameter of what? Of 30. Because it is on 30 or on the smaller uh, part. That's where you get your maximum stress. All right, let's move on. Uh, mm -hmm. I just wanted to highlight that so that you don't make errors there when you are solving that one. Is it fine? Can I move on? Yes. Yes, sir. All right. Please, please if you have questions, don't hesitate to ask. All right. Strain. Now, we know, guys, that by now, uh, that when a direct uh, force is applied on an elastic object, it will cause an object to deform. In other words, to change in size. So when a force is applied, it causes deformation. Deformation is the change in size. It, it can either cause it to expand or contract. Now, the strain is therefore the change in length. Remember that was caused by the force per unit length. The change in, the change in length. Here's the change in length and over uh, the over the original length. 
So strain E is delta X, which is the change in length over the original length. Right, can we, can we go on from there? Also guys, they can ask us in the, in the test or exam, say define strain. So strain is, is basically the change in length per unit. I mean, the, 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 the change in length per unit length or over original length. All right, here's my example two. Let's check this out. A rod is 0 0.8 meters long and it is stretched by 0 0.08 millimeters. It's stretched like 0 0.08 millimeters when supporting a mass of 300 kilograms. If the stress uh, is 150 uh, megapascals, calculate. Calculate the diameter of the rod as well as the strain. The question is, I'm sure, I'm sure it's clear, guys, the screen, everyone can see the screen. Yes. A rod, thank you, a rod is 0 0.8 meters long, meaning if we are collecting our data, L will be 0 0.8. It is stretched by 0 0.08, meaning that the change in length, again, it's stretched by, so that's the change in length. The change in length would be 0 0.08 millimeters, okay? When supporting a mass of, which means mass is 300 kilograms, if the stress is, so if stress of 150 MPa, so that is our, our, our data. Remember, we're looking for a diameter and the strain. So this is where we are going to do our calculation. Remember, we've got the original length, change in length, the mass, as well as the uh, stress. So how do we calculate, ladies and gentlemen, the, uh, the, the, the diameter? The diameter is obviously in the area. So we need to find the area first. We need to find the area first. Now, area is found how, guys? How do we calculate the area? Uh, sorry? Height is squared. It is height is squared, yes. I, I, I don't disagree with divided that. By four. But we don't have, yes, divided by four. But we first need to find what? We need to first find the area, again, uh, since we are given the stress as well as the what? As the force. So we have to use this formula for stress to find the, the area mm -hmm. first. So we first get the force because we convert that mass, in, the, that mass into what? Into oh, a newton, yeah. into a force, yes. Then, then we calculate the what, guys? The area. Now, stress is equal to force over area, and then area is equal to force over stress. We already have our force, and then we, we are given the stress. There's the stress there. So it becomes 19.6 to the power... Uh, times 10 to the power 6 meter squared. Then from there, we, the area is pi t squared, as you've, made, as you've alluded. We, say, we, we make d the subject. It becomes the square root of 4a over pi. Then we substitute back, you get 5 millimeters. Is, 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 the, is the process clear, guys? Yes. Okay. If ever that I need to repeat some things, guys, please don't hesitate to... Uh, okay, uh, Delane, your hand is raised. Uh, sir. Yes. Can T, um, what is, what is the, um, what's this, delta, delta X? Is it the change in, it's, in length or what? It is the, it is the change in length. Oh, okay, no, that's cool. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right, guys. So this is how we we we, we are going to determine the uh, the diameter. First, finding the what the area, and then from the area we calculate our our diameter. All right. But please, uh, the mass must be changed into a force, like we did here. Force is equal to we know that force is equal to mg. I get it? Mr. Yes. Yeah. All right. Now the que the next question says find the strain. Strain is equal to change in length over the, the original length, as you as as you asking. Know. Yes. So change in length is 0 0.08 times 10 to the power minus 3 because it's millimeters again. Yes. 
Yes. Mm. Then divided by the original length, which is 0, 0,8, then you get 0, 0,0001. Now, this does not have a unit. So we leave it like that. Unless in your calculator, sometimes it can be 1 times 10 to the power minus, but it doesn't have a unit because it's meters divided by meters, again. Yes. <laughs> so they cancel out. They, yeah, they cancel out. Okay. Then, now we are done with direct stress and the and the and the and string. We go to shear stress now, guys. Shear stress. Now, when you hear the word shear, you must think of something that is tearing. Like when you are when you are tearing a paper, you've got two forces that are moving in in an opposite direction. That cause an object to do what to tear or a uh, that tends to tear the object. Shear shear stress or, or shear force is a force that is applied sideways on a material and causes or tends to cause it to tear. You can see here that uh, you've got a force applied in that direction, this side is applied in that direction. So what is happening? It's going to tear there. It is shear, shear stress. Also, when, when you've got an object, two objects that are, have got a bolt that is uh, fastening them, and then a force is applied on both of them. So this is not F over two, this is just force, not, for, not, not force over two. This is just force. Mm, let me, to avoid, why is it force over two thing? I do not want that, but it's just force. That one is not there. It should be just a force. Okay. <clears throat> Let's move on. I wanna, I wanna have my, okay. <clears throat> now, uh, guys, here's the shear stress. Shear stress is still the same as force over area. Uh, and then that force of area, that force of area, uh, whereby that sign there is a sign for shear stress. The force of area, remember Newton, and uh, we are in Newtons. Force is in Newtons, area is in meter squared. So when these two are applied like that, they will cause shear on, on, on this uh, bolt. They will cause shear. And uh, it's, it is two forces in, in an opposite direction. Then we've got something also called a double shear. Double shear. Double shear is achieved when a pin joint is supported on both ends. Remember, guys, on, on this normal shear, uh, it, there's only one support, which is this. There's only this one support. For, for, I mean, for, for these two. But on a double shear, it is, it is supported here as well as on top. Here and on top. That is now called double shear. Now, when, the, when, when, when a double shear is used, now the force will be split into two. That is why you have F, F over two here. On the previous one, I said it's, F, it, it's, just, it's just one force. So that is why on our shear formula, you're going to have F over two A because the force is divided into two in this case. That's why you've got force over two multiplied by the area. So that would be double shear. So when there's double shear, or when the, a pin joint is supported on both ends, when the question says a pin joint is supported on both ends, guys, then you know that you are going to use F over two A, because you split the force into two uh, supports. All right, is that clear, guys? Yes. Yes, yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. And all of us, let's answer, guys. I think we we are thirty eight, except when there is a question. Please raise it. Here's an example. Now, <clears throat> a pin has a diameter of nine six millimeters, and the shear stress on the pin is not allowed to exceed fifty uh, MPa. Determine the maximum force that can be applied on on the clevis when a when the pin is supported on one side, remember when the pin is supported on one side, guys, it is this one again. Mm. Yeah. So 
on our data, we've got diameter is six millimeters. We've got a shear stress of 50 MPA. With these two information, guys, it is enough for us to calculate what? To calculate the, the shear stress. Shear stress. Yes. Now, guys, shear stress is equal to force over area, I get? Which means uh, yes. the force, remember, the question said what? <laughs> calculate the what? The force, I get? Force. force. So when you make F the subject here, force will be, a, what is that thing? Shear stress multiplied by area, yes, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, okay, stress multiplied by area. This is the stress, this is the area. Pi R squared, okay? I just put everything in one formula here. Pi R squared, this is your area, right? And then pi, your, your radius, if your diameter is three, your, I mean, if your diameter is six, that means your radius will be three. I've converted it already into meters, I get it. Then you multiply by 50 MPA. My apologies, not three, but six. Yeah, also this is incorrect. All right, but the answer is correct. Here is 1,414. This will be our maximum force if it is supported on one uh, support. B, when it is supported on two supports now, when it's supported on, on, on two supports, remember on two supports now, let's go to B question. A, calculate the maximum force on the clevis pin is used. If the clevis pin is used and supported on both sides, when it's supported on both sides, it is now going to be a double what? A double a shear, where F over 2A. So remember, this is my area there. And then this is shear. We substitute again. Uh, just that right now we're gonna we're gonna be having a two. Multiply by fifty times ten to the power six, not three. I'm going to fix that. And then it gives us two point eight two eight. It's just twice this. Uh, Telane. Mm, say I think the three is correct because I can we divide the six by two. And then we divide it again by a thousand. Uh, I'm talking, yeah, the three is correct. This, this is the one I'm talking about. Well, okay. Yeah, because it's mega. Yeah? It's mega. So it's, it is not supposed to be that. It's supposed to be what? It is supposed to be six. Ne? All right, let's continue. Let's continue with the lecture. All right, so we calculated it. That's what we call. Okay, now let us look at a uh, Hooke's law, uh, and then uh, we, we, we are going to discuss a couple of things after that. Guys, <clears throat> Hooke's law and Young's modulus. The Hooke's law and Young's modulus. When a force, be it compressive or tensile, yes. Is there anyone who's talking? No, oh, sir. Okay. Uh, when a force, be it compressive or tensile, is applied on an elastic material. So when you apply a force on an elastic material, it the the uh, the material will go back to its original length when the force is removed. So you stretch something or you compress something. The moment you, you, you remove the what the moment you remove the the, the force uh, the, the the object will go back to, the, to to its original length only if the only if the what the limit elastic limit has not been exceeded only when the limit has not been exceeded the elastic limit has not been exceeded guys in other words, once the, 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 the force that is applied exceeds the elastic limit, uh, the object will have permanent deformation. In other words, it will not go back to its original position. It will not go back to its original position. So you can stretch something to, to a certain degree. As long as you don't reach the elastic limit, it will go back to its original position. But when you stretch it beyond the elastic limit, 
now it's going to have permanent deformation. In other words, it will not go back to its original shape or length. Now, Hooke's law now states that within the elastic limit, within the elastic limit, in other words, before you reach, before the force exceeds limit, in other words, before deformation occurs, we call that limit a proportional limit. Before the elastic limit, the stress is directly proportional to the strain. The stress is directly proportional to the strain. So if they say define Hooke's law, guys, Hooke's law states that uh, within the elastic limit, the stress is directly proportional to the strain. We are still going to see that in, in detail. Now, a Young's modulus, on the other hand, is the ratio of the strain to the stress. So E, the Young's modulus is E, is that thing with E, is equal to stress over strain. This the young, the, 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 there is the Young's modulus there. Uh, yeah, before we go to the extension. Guys, and then we're gonna, we're gonna have a stress and strain graph. Stress and strain graph. On our y-axis, you've got stress. On your x-axis, you've got strain. That's what we, uh, the stress and strain graph looks like. So from O to P, it's a straight line. You can see that, right? From O to P is a direct stress line. We call that the proportional limit or, or the elastic limit where the stress and strain are directly proportional. You can see wherever there's a straight line, guys, it, it, it simply means that uh, the stress and strain are directly proportional. In other words, a force that is applied between O to P will not cause deformation. If the load is removed, there will be no permanent deformation anywhere between O, P. Anywhere between O, P, there will be no deformation. But the moment you move beyond P to Y, that's where now you reach yield limit. The yield limit is where the material will experience elongation or, or extension, even without the load being increased. So it has reached a point whereby it will now be having permanent deformation. Guys, I want to pause here for now. Ne? Uh, my time is always 40 minutes on the, on the videos. So this video is going to cut. So I'm going to send you another link where you are going to rejoin again, and then we're going to pick up from here. Am I making stress? Now, um, elastic limit, elastic region, is between OT. In other words, if the force is applied and it gives uh, the stress strain uh, relationship that lends us on between OP, it means it is on proportional limit. If the, if this force that causes strain and stress is removed, there will be no permanent deformation. Yes. Can we mute, guys? Yeah. Not sure who's... Okay. So the yield point Y, the yield point Y is, is a point where the material will experience an elongation without an increase in load. So between O to P, the load is being increased, but uh, there is no permanent deformation. If you remove that load, it will, the, the material will not uh, be de <coughs> deformed. But the moment the load is, is increased beyond P, then it has, it has gone to the yield limit. The material will, it will, excuse me, will increase or it will elongate without an increase in load the moment it goes to that point. Right? Then there's, there's also deformation that will take place, which is permanent. Okay, let's move on. But when we draw our stress and, and strain graph, guys, when we draw our stress and strain graph, in our case, we will draw up to the, so in other words, we will draw up to the yield point. This is, this is what we are going to be drawing. We are not going to draw beyond. It is, it is outside the scale of our syllabus for N4. So in our case, we will draw just up to yield point. So our values that will be given will be from, O, P to Y. Then beyond that, we are not going to entertain it. All right. Now, <clears throat> let's look at extension, guys. Let's look at extension. I've, I've applied the force of P 
on an object that is hinged on the on the wall let's just say it's hinged on the wall the original length is l and after applying this law this force l it will extend by that change in l okay, let me pause here for a bit do you understand what i'm i'm just saying guys no sorry i'm saying this no. can you please okay okay i can also hear the network is making a bit of yes no we've got it, we've got can you it. Please repeat? okay i'm gonna repeat i think the network is a bit slow for me on my side all right am i can you hear me now yes okay yes sir. yes sir. okay yes. so so i'm saying here is an object here which has got an original length of yeah. which has got an original length from here to here but after i apply this fourth year it elongates to, to, to that red that red part there is a change in length so it becomes longer extend yes due to the applied what force force yeah. is it now clear Yes. All right. Yes. Sir. So the object is going is is is, is going to extend. Yes, sir. That is why my heading here is extension. So how do we calculate the extension of this um uh, load uh, if we do not have strain? If you do not have strain, because you know that extension. Um, I mean extension is what. Um, extension can be calculated with this formula here. We, we, we want us to all to understand uh, why I'm opting for this. So I'm sorry, but your network is not on point. Yeah, I, I can. I can <laughs> Okay, no problem. Come on, just to me, TV. Yeah, someone is just busy on TV. Okay, <clears throat> guys, here's the formula that I'm, I'm I am focused on. Ne? I'm saying this is how you this is how you can calculate the. The strain again. Mm. And this is where the extension is. Are we together, guys? So we can manipulate this yes. and get the extension, which will, which will be strain, Sir. which will be strain multiplied by length again. Sir. Yes. Please move a bit closer to your speaker because I absolutely know your your. Okay, no problem. I'm just gonna put earphones on. I'm gonna be a bit clearer from there. All right, but all I'm saying is that there, you have got what? You have got the change in the extension, which is uh, x again. You can you can get yes. it. You can get that a, a, x using what? A strain multiplied by l. Is it clear? Mm. Yes, you can get it by strain multiplied by L. All right, yeah. <clears throat> Let's continue now. I hope I'm clear. Yes. You are. So we, we can get it using the, this formula here. But on my example or on the extension that I have, um, there, the one that I, I, I want us to look at, we do not have 
we do not have a extension. I mean, we don't have strain X here. We don't have strain X, but we, but, but we are given a force. So how do we calculate it using a force? How do you calculate extension you, where, where we are given a force? That is my, my question. All right. So I'm going to walk you through the manipulation of the formula, guys. You, what you are going to pay attention to will be the last formula. How it's manipulated, it's, it's, by, it's just a virtue of the fact that uh, you, you have to know it. I can't just give you the formula. So let's discuss how we are going to do that. Now, guys, we know Young's modulus again. Young's modulus yes. is equal to, uh, what is this, stress of a strain again? Yes. Mm. yes. So Young's modulus is equal to stress of a strain. Now, if Young's modulus is equal to stress of a strain, is this also correct mathematically, guys? That Young's modulus is equal to strain over yes, one multiplied by one over e. I get because if you multiply yes. this, if you multiply these two, it gives us back to that. I get yes, sir. Mm. number one. Now, remember what did I say? Yes. I said that you don't have strain. I get mm. in this case yes. you don't have strain. So what are we going to do? We know that strain is equal to extension over L, I get mm. Yes. We are trying to manipulate this equation so that we can calculate using the, the force. Yes. Right. So yes. if E is equal to one uh, uh, extension over L, now what can we do? In our case, we've got one over E there. So what must we do to get one over E here? We must flip them, I get Yes, sir. So if you flip yes. this, it becomes one over E is equal to L over delta X, I get Yes, in yes. Then we take this L over change in length, we substitute it here because they are equal again. Yes. Yeah, which is going to be L over change in X. Um, yes. Oh. Hmm. Now, guys, what are we looking for? I said to you, my, my heading is extension. So we must hmm. make change in what? X the subject, I get? Yes. yes. When we do that, then our change in X becomes force over area multiplied by le force of force mm. of area why are we having force of area here guys because of the the stress again stress stress is equal mm. to force of area yes i just forgot to write that equation down so stress is equal to force of area so this is why we are going this is how we are going to calculate extension when you when you are given a what a force there's the applied Oops. force the area you're gonna find it from what from from the given what diameter a is, is, a, is a original length. E is the Young's modulus. So that's how you're going to calculate it. Now, what if now you, you are given two uh, 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 parts, two parts, two parts now. Guys, again, let's pay attention. What did we say? Did we, say? Mm -hmm. we said that uh, you are going to have extension for what? For each part, I get? For part one. Yes. Mm. So extension is equal to? Uh, ex uh, total extension will be extension uh, of part one plus extension of part two because they are going to extend differently. Now, we know that, guys, uh, according to this formula here, extension is equal to F over A L E again. So yes. it's F over A yes. times L1 over E. The same formula here, this is for one part. Plus the extension two, we insert it, it's F over A2 Second area, I get the smaller one, L E yes. L two, which is the or, the original length of the second part over E. Now, guys, what is in common between the two? What is the common fact? The force. It's force. Force. Only it's the force. force and the Young's modulus. Yeah, F force and the Young's. It's the force of area. No, it's area is different because it's got two different mm. sizes. So, but the young modulus, modulus. modulus is going to be the same. So, yeah. yeah. So if you, so if you take out F E as a common factor, what do you have on the inside left? L one. Oh, okay. L one over okay. A two plus L two over A two. A two. Yes. Yes. This is how you're going to calculate the extension of this particular uh, two bars. Are we clear, guys? I'm going to send you this. I'm, go I'm going to send you this so you can go through them. Don't worry about it. I just wanted you to know how it's done. All right. Now, here's the example to, to, to see if we understand what we just did. Uh, we've got three now in this case. One, two, three. Are we together? Yes. 
whoever has got a baby that is shouting, yes. please just mute it, mute it. <laughs> Tina, we love kids. We, go, we love kids. We're going to end up saying, share them. <laughs> You'll want to see the number three. All right. All right. Let's continue, guys. Let's continue. Now, calculate the total change in length. The total change in length in this uh, that will occur in the steel bar. There's someone who's. Okay. Let's continue. So, guys, we've got one, two, three this time around. Ne? But it is the same yes. process. Yes. What are we looking for? The total extension. Now, to find the total extension, guys, we know that extension total is change in extension one plus change in extension two plus change a, a, in, in length. Three. So each of them are going to have their own extensions. Now, we know, guys, yeah. that here's, gonna, here's our formula. When we had two of them, it was L1 over A1, L2 over A2. Now we're going to have L3 over A3 because there are three, I get Yes. 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 This being one, this being two, and this being three. It depends which one you want to make one, two, three, guys. Anyway, it it it, it it's not compulsory, right? That's so, right. can I continue? Yes, you yes. can. Okay, good. Now, since we we, we have got L, uh, uh, we already have the lens again. One, two, three. Yes. We've got the force six hundred. We've got Young's modulus 200. The only thing we need to calculate would be the area one, area two, area three. Ne? Yes. Now, area, guys, is pi r squared. You can use pi t squared. It's up to you. So area one is 25 because it's 50. Area two is 20 because it's 40 radius. Area three is going to be 15, 0, 0.15. I've calculated the different areas. In their in in their form, uh, is it clear, guys? Then yes, all we do, is, all we do is just substitute it. Yes, there. Sir. Just substitute it there. Six hundred Young's module uh, force times ten to the power three. Young's modulus two hundred to the power nine. Zero point three is the length of one with its area one. Zero point two six is this length with the area two. Zero point four is this length with its area what? So everything, guys, must be in meters, okay? Everything in meters. <sighs> then from there, you get your answer, 3,192. This is six marks, guys. Thank you. Hmm. This is six marks. Hmm. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Let, can we continue? Is this, is this difficult, guys? No, no, it's no not. but it's confusing. Where is it confusing? Mm -hmm. Um okay, so mm -hmm. for now the zero comma three five. Ne? Where is I get it we took it yeah. from yes. okay. Oh, wow. okay. It's the length, length one. No, it's yeah. the length. Yes, length. And T, two. what is the what is the fifty? It's the diameter. The diameter, these are diameters. Yeah. Okay, no. Okay. It's fine now. Yeah. All right. Remember, a diameter, in my case, I'm using radius. So I divided 50 by 2, I got 25. I get I divided 40, mm. I got 20, 30, I got 15. All right. Yeah. Okay, guys. Now, let's put that, what, what we have just looked at uh, again. Let's look at other, an, another one. Here now, we've got an example five. Also, on November 2017 is the question paper. Now, the, the question says, the following readings were obtained. Please have your calculator ready because you are going to calculate here. The following readings were obtained from a tensile stress at Modise Engineering, PTYLTD. That's not so important. What is important is that these are the tests. But a load, 0 0.29, all of them are in kilonewton. Are we together, guys? Mm -hmm. And you've got yes. extensions. You've got extensions. These are all extensions, guys. Uh, the only mistake they made with our extensions is that they, they didn't say they are in what, but they are in millimeters, okay? They are in millimeters. Yeah. After, yeah, after I confirmed my calculations, they were in millimeters. So the question is, here's the gauge length. So this is the original length, the gauge length. Ne? This is the original mm -hmm. diameter on the bar, the original diameter, this one. 
because in other words, it was a, uh, it was a solid bar, uh, which is, this is the original length. Now, what they want us to do is to complete this table. What is the strain? What is the uh, stress and strain? Okay, now, guys, now we know that in order to, for us to find this one here, the, the, the stress here, the stress there, the stress there, it's force over area, I get? Yes. yes. So if it's force over area, we need to calculate the area. And we already know that the diameter is what? 11 point? 11. 11. Exactly. Remember, I use radius. So this is the formula. This is the half of it. It's not wrong to use diameter as a whole, guys, okay? I, ju I just happen to, I just happen to use this one. So if you can use pi d squared over four. squared. Yes. So I found out that the area is 10, to, is 10 times 10 to the power minus three. Okay. So how, yes, and then the first two is going to be zero and zero because zero doesn't change anything again. So it was zero, zero. Mm -hmm. Can you please calculate for me what would be the stress here? Remember it's force over area. The force is already what? 2.5 again. The area, is, is. the area is 10. 10. So, how much is, so how much will this one be? Can you please just punch it for me? 250. Um, I've got 2.5. I'm also, I'm also punching it to the exponent what? 3, I get it? Mm. Yeah. To the 10 to the three. exponent 3. Uh, 2.5 to the, 10, 10 to the power 3 because it's kilo newton. How much do we get, guys? Hello? Excuse me. Example five. Example five here says... Um, we the following calculations now we are drawing the stress and strain guys we are now trying to draw the stress and strain graph are we together guys yes yes, yes. so the following calculations calculated stress and strain results were obtained from a test carried out so already they gave us the stress and the strain uh, the first example was to show us how to calculate uh, the stress uh, uh, and how to calculate the strain, ne? the previous example. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's already mm -hmm. given to you. Then how do you plot it and then answer the questions? So with these values given, they say use the above uh, um, values to draw a neat label, a detailed of a sketch. Now using a suitable scale. So guys, we are going to use a scale because they, we need to see some things there. There are some significant mm -hmm. things that we need to see. Now, when we draw this stress and strain, as I'm trying to make it a bit larger, yes. Uh, so it starts on zero, zero again? Yes. Yes, it starts on zero, zero. Here, so, so, so here's the point of zero, zero. And then it goes on 14 and two, the stress is 14. The stress is 14, the stress is there. So when the stress is 14, that's where 14 is. I know we are using a suitable scale, guys. So we are going to mm. find the value of 14 and two. Two will be here, the strain is at the bottom, two will be there. All right, so it's, it's from there, it's, that's where you're gonna get 14. And here at the bottom, that's where you're gonna get, you know how to plot a graph, guys. I'm sure you have done that. And there's gonna be 28, as well as what? Four, the next point is 42 and six, I get mm -hmm. is 56 just before 60. And the yes, eight. I think we should move to the next question. Sir. All right. But what is important here? What is important here is that what I want you to pay attention to. What I want you to pay attention to here. Is this part? Can you see that the dots? 
they are in a straight line from zero up, up until one, two, three, up, up until the fourth point. They, it, it is a straight line. Mm. Yes. 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 yes so this straight line is called what? This straight line. This straight line is called the elastic. Elastic region. Yes. <laughs> exactly. The elastic part. I get it. The proportional yes. elastic. Yes. So in other words, anyway, yes. from from zero to that point. So this point will be point what? P. P. Uh, P. Yes. This point will be point P. I'm just, I'm just, I'm just writing it, although they didn't ask for it, okay? No. Mm. This mm. point will be point P. And then the last point there will be point what? Y. 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 Yes. Yeah. That's where they're going to, we are y. going to have point Y. Yes. All right. So anywhere between zero and point P, they tell us that uh, the what, the, there's no elongation. Yes, the mm, Young's modular. No Yes, the Young's modulus anywhere between uh, O P. The Young's modulus is going to be <coughs> any ratio there, any ratio there. So in other words, P is the fourth one, two, three, four. So in other words, from one, two, three, four up until forty-two. Any ratio that we can use from zero to forty-two, we can take fourteen over two will give us a Young's modulus. Twenty-eight over four will give us Young's modulus. Forty-two over six will, will still give us a Young's modulus. Why? Because mathematically, what is this? It is the same gradient. Again. Yes. 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 So the next question says, use the 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 graph A to determine the Young's modulus. So the Young's modulus, you can take fourteen over two. It gives you. It's gonna give you the same answer. Of Young's modulus, mm -hmm. you take 28 over 4, it gives you the same answer. You take 42 over 6, so any one that you decide to use. Okay. In my case, mm -hmm. I just took the first one. Simple. Mm -hmm. 14 times 10 to the power 6, I get it because it's mega. Over 2 times mm -hmm. 10 to the power minus 4. Then I got 70 giga pascals. So you can, you might as well use 28. 10 to the power 6 or use 42. But if you take 42, remember the strain with, that corresponds with 42 is 6 again. The strain that corresponds yeah. with, yes, exactly. All right. Thank you. Now, <clears throat> let's go back to correcting this. Can we, can we just correct this together so that we can put our um, answers are right? La? So what is the right answer for, for 25 here? <coughs> after your calculation. <laughs> 0 0.25, I get? Yes. Oh. All right. Please explain. Okay. 0 0.25, I get? Yes. Please. Yes. Mm. Divided by what? By, okay, 0 0.25, which is exponent 3. Mm -hmm. Divided by area. area, which is this. Mm. And then your answer must be your answer must be in mega, meaning that meaning that your final mm. answer again you divide it by what? Million. A million. A million. Yes. Mm. Okay. All right. Now you understand. Okay. We are fine now. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So I'm, go I'm gonna make a lot of changes. All right. So the strain the strain is fine. Moving on to the next one. Yes. Is, uh, what what should be the next answer there? Zero point. 0.987 mega pascals. Okay. All right, we are, we, are, we are correcting this. So and then and then what should be the next one here? From seven. One comma seven two seven. One comma. Seven two seven. One comma seven two seven. Yes. Sir. The strain is fine, and then this one will be how much? 
two comma four, four, four seven. seven. Two comma four seven. Four seven. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Someone is asking how do you calculate strain? Strain. Strain is a change in length. Are we together, guys? It is the yes. change in length per by the original length. By, divided by the original length again. Yes. Mm-hmm. So, so for instance, let's check. Let's check this one. This one of a uh, four point four. Let's check that one of four point four. This one here. It comes from. Uh, it is number one, two, three. So it comes from this. Zero point zero two four six divided by fifty six. Do we get 4.4? Yes. yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, did we answer your question? Patience. Uh, patience, did we answer your question? Mm. Yeah, I think you can answer. All right, thank you. Yeah, yes, right, answer. Thank you. And then, uh, and then from here, guys, um, we were we were still on the last part. Yeah, zero point three there. How much was that? Mm. Three comma two one. Three comma two one. Yes. Sir. Yes. <clears throat> All right. Let's put it there. Three comma two one. Okay. Yes, then we save it. That is it. That is it. That is it, guys. And then uh, everything else. Yeah, it's correct. So there was a mistake there. I do not know what. Maybe I was very sleepy doing that. <laughs> I slept. I slept Mistakes very happen, late. Sir. Yeah, it happens. Mistakes happen. Yes. Thank you. All right. Then from there, we we calculated the strain. And then the, the, the Young's modulus uh, for, for the last part. So that, that was it, guys. Um, I want to know if there are any questions that uh, any any questions that you guys have, perhaps that you, you feel like to where can I can I have a Chat, a Chatan? <laughs> Mr. Gumet. Yes. Um now can you go back to to the graph or the, the, the table? The table. The table that we are just doing now. This one. Yes. 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 Okay. So now is it always gonna be um the the, the load, ne? Yes. Will it always be? I mean, okay, this is what I have to say. Do we have to divide it by a thousand at the end? I mean, by a million at the end every time we do it, Papo? It depends on what we were given. Uh, okay, let me let me just show you why we are dividing by a thousand because here they say it must be in what by a million, like it's by not a million, thousand. yes, by, by a million, million because it must yes. be in mega. So, how do you convert? How do you okay. convert a Pascals to mega by dividing by a million. By a million. Yes. Okay. So it should be in mega all the time. Sorry. That's my question. Should it be in mega all the time? Remember, this table was given uh, to us, meaning that according to this table, it was in mega. And again, guys, okay. stress stress is always big. It's always in what? It is always in mega anyway. Stress is always in mega. Okay. Yes. Okay. No, thank you. Thank you. Um, uh, I saw another hand. Can I? Yes. I'm struggling to get my area. So, uh, with the area, are we first going to divide the 11.27? Oh, wait. Wait. First, wait. Then? You can you can calculate the same area using uh, the, the diameter, guys. Just use oh, just no. use pi just use pi into a eleven point two seven exponent negative three again squared mm-hmm. divided by four. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, 
but I'm 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 very doubtful of the area, guys. That is the problem. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Can I can yeah. I can I can I have a ch chat? Is it Chatan? Yes, sir. Is you okay? Talk. <laughs> I'm not sure. I'm not sure, Chazana, whether it's my network or yours. Can you? Can you? I think it's his. Mm. Chazana, your network. Just type. No, so the area is correct. The area is correct. Yeah, so the area is correct. Okay, uh, Chasani, can you just type, hey, please? Chasani, yeah, yeah. Type, type because because your network chimp is very 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 bad. Can okay, you when you type, so can I ask? Y yes. Okay. Sorry. Okay. Can I ask? Y yes, you can ask. Go ahead, Chasani. Uh, so for the area, name. We're gonna convert the millimeters to meters first. Yes. And then mm -hmm. divide it by two. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it still gives you the same thing. Yeah. So it's correct. So the area is going uh, uh R is going to be uh, 5.63. Yes. Mm -hmm. uh, multiply by mm -hmm. to the power negative three, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Just that, guys, you know what? You know what's my challenge? When, when I use the whole diameter, for some reason, I get a different answer. The same yes, answer, yes. I get the same answer of a hundred times ten to the power minus six. I think, I I think those answers that we did before were right. So, I'm trying to I'm trying to. Yeah. So I'm, trying to, I'm trying to find out what, you, what is wrong with this one that we did here. Yes. Can I ask, sir? Yes. Uh, more who, who right here is here. It's supposed to be 5,635 multiplied by 10 to And then y squared. Which oh, divide by four? Wait. I think I've already divided. By four. It's already divided by a thousand, guys. This is already divided by a thousand. So that is already divided by a thousand. Mm. I left out one zero. I already I left out one zero. That's where the problem is. Yes. I left out one zero. Damn. So you see, Ubuti. Uh -huh. is, yeah, yeah. This is this is all wrong. For them, just for the mere fact, I left out one zero there. So mm -hmm. these are all correct. So if you put a zero there, I'm very confused. Yes. Sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when I was converting this into radius, I left out one zero there. So they were supposed to be two zeros, not one. Converting what to read? Oh, never mind. Okay. Yeah. Never mind. Never okay, mind. So that is going to be y yes. So the answer will be now what? Uh, nine, 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 so it's going to be 10, eh? Yes, it's so going to be minus 5. Can five. I, can I, mm. yes, Debbie, Debbie, you, you have a question? Or Debbie? Say, so what's oh, the diameter? Meter square. That, here's yeah, the diameter, 11.27, original diameter. Mm. Oh. Yes. Okay. Yeah, so my error was that. So these answers are all going to be correct now. Can we can we just prove that one again? 2.5? Yes, it is correct. Divided by 10 exponent minus 5. Mm. Yes, it's 25, okay. I guess. It's 25, yeah. yes. All right. Yes. That's it. So the first answers were right today. Yeah, the yes. first answers were right. Your first answers were right. Yes. The only problem is that we, we were dividing by 10 to the power minus 3 instead of minus 5. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Yeah. yeah, that was very confusing. This was very confusing, but we learned.
we learned from it. We learned yes. It. Okay. Is there any other question? Thank you for for, for raising this. There was there was there was a question by who um was the, was, the, was this gentleman that couldn't um the network chatan chatting chatan also. yeah yeah yes sir. can you type your question yes, chief and yes eh ne ke botsa gona skelly se sa ka go se o se se be distinct ke bona se ba 2 4 6 up to 8 then from this is change why is change as ke tlama the scale eh skelly on to ka go ile ya more in case three and stuff hey we have more say yes so you 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 are saying one, two, three, four points were a different scale compared to this point and that point. Yes, sir. Uh, I don't. I don't think. I don't. I don't. I. I don't think it changed. But let's let's evaluate. Let's evaluate. Um, two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, five, ten, fifteen, twenty. All right. So. Where did it change did you? On which point? I'm just going to say we say into two, four, six, up to eight. Then we are at 13 and 18,4. 84. 13. Yes, so what 13 is our guy. It's our guy 13. No, 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 Chief. Okay, now I understand your question, Chief. Um, these are given values. We didn't calculate them. This was a given mm. value. These are given. Oh, this right. the yeah, this is the question. Yeah. Okay. Then we are going to use these to plot the graph. So, so what we, I mean, what we did was to plot the graph using the given values. Okay. Sir. All right. All right. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sure. 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 Um, is there any other one, guys? Any other question? No, sir. Okay. If if should there be any questions, guys, please, you know, you know the platform, the groups. Uh, I'm going to send you um, those um, handouts that I normally have so that you can do, redo and work on them. So if you have questions, you are going to raise them. Uh, it's already to 12, guys, and we've taken almost two hours on this. Thank you very much for participating and uh, for raising questions and for correction. I also learned a lot from you. Um, are there are there any other questions? I'm going to share this everything that I've just done here. I'm going to share the, the examples, of course. I'm going to share them on the group. Is there any other? Yeah, are there any other uh, questions that before I log everybody out? No, sir. No, sir. I don't think so. All right. Thank you, guys. At, no, sir. At um, for this is for my group because the other ones were visitors. This is for my group. Can you please do this so that we can, we, I, I can give you a question at uh, five to uh, afternoon. Please mm. just, just, just have an hour or two where you're just going to be practicing. Even if, even if you practice five, five questions from five previous question papers, then in the, in the, in the, in the afternoon, let's see what people understand and what people don't understand. Thank you. Cool. Nice one. Okay. okay. All, right. All right. Thank you very much, guys. We'll... Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye, guys. Bye. <laughs> 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 <laughs>